Good evening. Tonight we take you to Assam to bring to you the political scene in this northeastern state. We study some of the issues involved in the implementation of the Assam Accord, as well as those that have arisen because of non-implementation of certain clauses in the Accord. We analyze the Bodo agitation and the reasons for it, the growing menace of an extremist movement, and the crisis within the ruling Assam Gana Parishad party. We spoke to some of the protagonists in the political arena to bring you a composite picture of the political scene as it exists in the state today. मैं आपको आज बता सकता हूं कि कल रात को बल्कि आज सुबह करीब पौने तीन बजे एक समझौता हुआ है आसाम के विद्यार्थियों और भारत सरकार के बीच में। On the 15th of August 1985, these words of Rajiv Gandhi seemingly brought to an end one of the longest agitations in Assam, an agitation which claimed hundreds of lives and had brought economic growth in the state to a standstill. With the signing of the Assam Accord, a new beginning was promised. The Accord addressed itself to the principal issues of contention, the infiltration of foreigners in Assam, the economic package for all-round development, and the protection of Assamese culture and tradition. The effort then began to identify the foreigners as per the conditions agreed to in the Accord. Those who immigrated prior to 1966 were to be given Indian citizenship. Immigrants who came into Assam between 66 and 1971 were to be disenfranchised for 10 years, and those arriving after 1971 were to be deported. The Congress High Ministry led by Hitesur Saikia was dissolved, and fresh elections to the Assam Assembly were called for. The 1985 elections saw the agitation leaders become the new political masters of Assam. It was from this campus in Gohati University, a young band of student leaders had marshaled their forces and mobilized a people's movement to challenge the government and paralyze administration. Now these leaders were cabinet ministers of the Assam Gana Parishad government. The mood was upbeat and euphoric. Four years later, as Assam finds itself in the throes of political and social turmoil, as non-implementation of the Assam Accord is being criticized, the general perception is that the idealism of the early AGP days has waned and that perhaps the Assam Gana Parishad government has really not been able to live up to its expectations. The leaders of the AGP the leaders of the present government, the other day they were the student in the classroom. So it was one thing to hesitate, carry on an hesitation from the classroom. They came straight from classroom to the cabinet room. It is very difficult to face the situation that is in the cabinet room because you will have to administer the state and the state as a whole has a, so many problems they will have to solve all these problems or face the problems. So it is just not easy to do it. It requires experience. Oh, this is not correct. Mm. Probably you know that uh, when the uh, British transferred the power to, the, to our people, they not transferred the power to the rulers. They transferred to the power to the people. Therefore, there is no question of experience. The question of uh, your political will, how you can progress or how you can solve the problem, this is the main thing. We have already completed four years and now if I say that I am not experienced, then it is people will not accept. Now we have already completed four years. In the initial stage, stage there, we are facing some difficulties because we come from the uh, student life. But now we have already completed four years. They have mishandled, mismanaged. And as a matter of fact, there is no government in the state because they are not equal to the task, as I have already said. They are not equal to the task for which the people have voted them to power. When we come to the power, there is a lot of expectation of the people. But it is very difficult to fulfill all the ex expectations. But we are trying our level best and we are working very with, sincerely to fulfill the aims and objections of the people of Assam. I will not uh, say that uh, this is correct that the AZP is not reacting to the situations. But you must remember that the 1985 election was a very different kind of election. In fact, it was not an election, it was a referendum. Six years of oppressive rule. Uh, people gave vent to their feelings after six years of a lot of oppression in that election. And when expectations rise high, Obviously, it is very difficult for a government to respond to these expectations. And in our system of government, probably, 
because the resources are less, problems are many. Decumbent fails when there is such a high wave of expectation to respond to the expectation of the people to the desired level. But I believe that the EGP has still a lot of command over the people of Assam. Within three years of the signing of the Assam Accord, a new agitation took shape in Assam. The movement for a Bodo land was to bring to the Assamese political scene a disturbing element. This ethnic strife sprang from a section of the Plain Tribals, the Boros, demanding economic and linguistic recognition in the form of a separate state to be carved from Assam itself. They claimed persecution and neglect by the Assamese. And gradually the agitation took a militant turn with violence reminiscent of the Assam agitation of the early 80s. The demands of the Boro leaders were as unrelenting as they were belligerent. The basic truth is that this Assam government, its officials, bureaucrats, ministers, policemen, all are anti-tribal. So whatever these economic packages or developmental schemes are sorted out or chalked out, this cannot be uh, sincerely implemented in two sense. So this implementation is not possible under this anti-tribal government and its bureaucrats. So that is where the solution is the separation, the division of Assam and creation of separate state of Bodhaland. The central and state governments categorically refused further division of Assam, but agreed to a series of tripartite talks to diffuse the volatile situation. The AGP state government, however, insisted that the then Congress government in the center was encouraging the Boros to the path of violence. They alleged certain central intelligence agencies of instigating the Boro leaders to score political points against the state government. That was a political game played by the Congress I at the time. We ruled our country. What do you mean? When you say, hmm? What do you mean when you say it's a Congress game? No, they instigated them to destabilize the SB government here. Therefore, they started the agitation. Probably know that more than nine uh, plain tribes settled here. Because uh, therefore, if you something you want to give Bodo people, then you must ready to give it to the Rabha, Missing, Karbi, Dimasha, Deuri, Tiwa, for these tribes also. Therefore, separate state or further division of Assam is not possible. What do you mean uh, when you say that uh, the Bodoland agitation was instigated by the Congress side? No, I would have sufficient evidence that uh, they instigated them. And uh, therefore, they don't want to discuss with the state government also. They always approached the central government at that time. And central minister also, minister and other officials also helped them for continuing their agitational program. This is absolutely false because uh, the allegation was there and we have denied it time and again on the floor of the house. Now they are in power and those organizations which were pinpointed to be behind this, they can verify themselves. All files, paper is with them, organization with them. <laughs> Raw is not uh, uh, like that organization because probably know that before election they destroyed some file. And they dismissed the two raw officials also. Then why they dismissed them? It is not true. It is baseless one. I have been uh, protesting these things. This is not true at all. And uh, Mr. Mohanto, he has a sense in his words now. He himself has said, said, said that Ro has dissociated from Epsu now. He said. And uh, Ro did not associate us earlier also. We protested in his third stop. He could not produce any document also. He says that it is. Uh, a uh, row spent uh, three crores of rupees in absent movement or like that. No, unfortunately, this money that, that is spent is or, you know, these things are not documented. So you obviously will not have receipts or thing, but... Uh... No, no, no. How it can be proved? This is not true at all. This is not true. In this atmosphere of charge and counter charge, a moot point remained. The tribals in Assam were alienated and a new dimension had been added to Assam's turbulent politics. The Boro agitation directly affects only one Lok Sabha seat. Yet it was obvious to the National Front government, which replaced the Congress I in the center, as the tripartite talks continued, that the solution could be found only if genuine grievances of the tribals were addressed to. Meanwhile, however, the Boro leaders were adamant that nothing short of Boro land was acceptable to them. And our thing is very much clear, except Boro land we are not going to accept. Boro land is the only thing that you're going to accept? Yes. And if Boro land is not given to you? There will be a struggle. For how long? 
continuously till it is as if yes we are ready to fight and how will you fight will have to menace will you have violence anything else will you go underground not that not that will you take help of um, countries in bordering india no no we don't have society. so your fight will be within the constitution of india yes, within the constitution yes yes definitely india. definitely we are very much democratic and constitutional we are demanding only the constitutional provision of article 2 3 and 4 of indian constitution while the boru agitation captured the attention of the country and symbolized assam's political dilemma it put into background the issue of the tardy implementation of the assam accord the political adversaries of the agp claimed that the agp had been voted to power on the promise of the immediate implementation of the accord the state government on the other hand accused the then congress i government in the center of creating hurdles but the fact remained that although the assam border was to have been fenced with barbed wire to prevent illegal infiltration of immigrants work on this was yet to begin seriously the issue of the revision of electoral rolls continued to dominate the agenda of all the political parties in assam it was on the plea that the electoral rolls had not been properly revised that assam did not go to the polls for the 9th lok sabha with the rest of the country and now with the electoral roll issue still undecided the polls have been deferred for a second time the as you know they are uh, saying that there are many names who, which should not be in the electoral rolls on the other hand the minority organizations they have said you see uh, thousands of uh, names have been well deleted so that is there then as you also have said that uh, rolls are not properly updated so these controversies continuing and it is because of this that the proposed lok sabha election which was uh, scheduled to be held uh, along with the state assembly has again been put off i don't know whether it will be possible to uh, prepare uh, uh, roles to the satisfaction of this uh, uh, divergent groups the election were imposed in 1983 in assam and the election were held uh, also in 1985 but uh, we want a correct electoral roll deleting the name of the foreigners we have a, we had a long discussion with the chief election commissioner uh, let us see but uh, we must have a correct electoral roll otherwise we will not allow any election to take place in assam now they are telling i mean the asu or assam students union telling that this electoral draft electoral roll which is published contains names of lakhs of foreigners because they find that there are unusual increase whereas the state electoral office, office they maintain that is increase is not unusual even the state government's view is such nonetheless again a question of the examination is come we feel that because of their earlier pronouncement that there are millions of foreigners in assam they cannot be satisfied with this type of draft electoral roll about which we are also complaining that lots of indians have been left out assam agitationists are trying to find out a black cat in a room without light in a dark room and in fact when there is no cat inside the room when there was an uh, assam accord one clause was that by, without updating the voter list there will be no election and for that reason one special step was taken by the then election commissioner one month time was given for objections and claim 10 observers were appointed by the election commission and about 9 uh, lakhs voters were